of today, we have Professor Luis Barbosa. Professor Barbosa received his bachelor's degree in Mexico in 1979 and his PhD in France uh, in 1987, both in computer science. From 1991 to 2002, he was a faculty member at the School of Information Technology and Engineering at the University of Ottawa. And in 2002, he joined the Department of Computer Engineering at Universidad de Castilla-La Mancha in Spain. He is currently the director of the Albacete Research Institute of Informatics, and he does a lot of work on wireless communications. He's going to talk to us today about his work and uh, his institute. Let's give him a nice round of applause. Welcome, Professor Barbosa. Uh, thank you very much for coming, and thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to come and talk to you about the activities in our research institute. Before, coming, before going to the topic of my talk, I would like just to say some few words about uh, where I'm coming from. So uh, I'm coming from the city of Albacete, that is, I just marked it here. It's not a very big city, 200K uh, people. It's two hours from Madrid, the capital of uh, Spain and not very far from Barcelona, about five hours as well. It is located in the region called Castilla-La Mancha. It is the central southern part of Spain. It's a region that is not very developed. I mean, there is no high-tech companies there. But there is uh, interest in all regions across Europe, not only in Spain, to develop these regions, in involving them in innovation projects. And for that, they have been calling the universities as well and research institutes. So I'm going to be here talking about the role of our, our research institute in going into innovation and supporting the development of the region. For those who are not familiar with this region, that maybe you have not heard about it, maybe you have heard about this little guy, Don Quixote, the man of La Mancha. So that's the land of uh, Don Quixote. OK, so I have divided my talk into two main topics. First of all, I will go into some background material and motivation of, uh, of my talk, and some stories, some uh, experiences that have been uh, developed across Europe. And then I will go more in detail into what we are doing in Castilla-La Mancha. First of all, presenting what Castilla-La Mancha, what are the main characteristics of this region, and the activities that are being developed in our university and in our institute. The background of this, or the motivation, is um, how, how can the university contribute to the regional development more than what we normally do, okay? We do research, we teach, we train people, but now we, have, we are being called to innovate and to participate with the local industry or with companies in the technology transfer of, this, of the results that are being developed in our labs. This, in Europe, there is the objective to develop the, what we call the knowledge society that for its growth depends on the production of new knowledge. This new knowledge is normally created in the universities, okay? And it's transmitted to the students through education. But now we have to go a step further, as I already mentioned. We have to be, get involved in the in innovation process to create new ways to solve things, new services, new products. So this is an important role that we, are, we, as university people, we are responsible to get involved into it. In, back in 2000, the Europe of knowledge has been a prime objective of the European Union with the Lisbon Agenda. In that Lisbon Agenda, there was a call for all actors and players to participate, not only the European, at the European level, but all, as well as the national and regional and local governments to get involved together with enterprises and the universities in developing what we call the European Knowledge Society. And the universities once again play a particular central role into this development. We do create knowledge, we transmit it to the students, and we have to get more and more involved into, in the innovation process in order to contribute to the development of our regions. In February 2004, we organized a workshop in Albacete in order to review the many activities that are ongoing across Europe in many different countries. As you can see, we have, we have participants from Finland, Sweden, Germany, 
United Kingdom, Ireland, Scotland, and two regions from Spain. For most of us, it may look like in some countries like Germany, Finland, Sweden, they are very well developed. But to our surprise, there, there, is, there are regions that are more developed and other regions that are not that well developed, or some regions that are experiencing problems because some particular sector or industry is going down, so they have to reinvent themselves to be able to compete and get, get a better uh, standard of life. I will go and review some of these experiences that were told during this workshop. The first one when came from Tampere region in southern Finland. This region is a region of uh, about uh, half a million people. And the city counted with 35,000 students attending studies in two universities, three polytechnical schools, and more than 30 vocational institutes. This, this city is the most important industrial city in Finland with about 200,000 people. The problem with this region, what it was found that in the mid-90s, some, some sectors that were very important in the economy of this region were decreasing. Okay? So there was a radical decrease in metal and textile industries. So they had to look into new ways or new sectors to improve the economy of this region. And what they have done, they have developed a, a strategic plan focusing in fields of expertise that look very promising. One of them, mechanical engineering and automation, one that is very close to what we are doing in our institute is the ICT, information, uh, ITCs, information technology and communications sectors, and healthcare and technology. So there was a plan, there was a plan, and the university and the educational institutes were called to part actively participate in this initiative in order to be able to cope with the decreasing of some sectors and, and train people in these new technologies that will look promising in the near future. So there was a first plan of, uh, from, from 1994 to 1998, and then plans for, this, for the following years to focus on some more advanced technologies. As you can see, also the government put a lot of money, and the local industry was also called to participate. So there was a three actors players here, the, the universities, the private sector, as well as the regional, as, as well as the regional government. They counted with a company that is quite strong in, in, tele, in the telecommunications world, that is the Nokia. So they had a, a high-tech company that could uh, somehow uh, pull all, uh, all these people to work in, in, in areas of interest and promising. There were also created research professorships where in order to establish a good and a strong university. So from all the different uh, uh, educational institutions, together with the companies, there was created a cluster of people to create a knowledge base that were to be able to develop new knowledge uh, that will contribute to the development of new products and new services. So the university, as you can see, clearly has a very important role to play in all this. Another uh, experience that was also uh, presented in this workshop in Albacete came from another uh, northern country, this time Sweden, and specifically from the region of Blekinghem. It's a small region with a population very, very close to our city's population of 150,000 people. And they have also a success story to tell us. They had the participation of very important companies, the Swedish companies, Ericsson, and Vodafone and some other companies, so they invested a lot on ITC, or they focus on ITC technologies in order to be able to create new jobs and to create uh, the expertise needed in order to develop new products and services. They counted with the support of the uh, Institute of Technology, a young institute created in 1989 with 5,800 students, and as you can see, they were able to attract even people from outside of that region to come and, and find new, new uh, 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 jobs and, 
and to work on innovation pro uh, projects. As you can see, 32% per of the operations of, the re of, the, of this university is on research. More than 50% of that in the field of technology. So the university, once again, was identified as being an important actor for the regional development. Create a new image of Leckingham, close cooperation with industry to help to start ups and supply the skilled labor and develop new knowledge by doing research. A third one, and I will stop with the, this is the last of these experiences that were, uh, were presented at this workshop, came from the region of Bremen in uh, northern uh, Germany. This, this region had some important sectors already established, but once again, they were finding some negative signs that the, the Bremen was the poorest state of Germany. This, there were structural problems. The shipyards, for instance, the, this industry all across uh, Europe has, has gone down. Even in Spain, we have the same problem. Okay? So they had to go and invest on new, in new uh, expertises. And once again, ICT, information, uh, ITC, Information Technology and Communications, was the one that was selected as being one of the most promising, promising one. And once again, together with the government, industry, and the universities, they develop a strategic plan to develop, uh, to develop uh, a better way uh, to create knowledge. So it has been identified once again in Bremen that the universities play a major role in attracting companies. If you want to attract a high-tech companies, and I will come back when I will talk about Castilla-La Mancha, the government can, con can contribute to attract companies by providing infrastructure such as science parks, funding of research and, and development efforts, but the region requires to have a well-established and strong university in order to be able to establish a sustainable relation and not just uh, uh, attract the company to establish and when it finds a better player, go with that one. It is important that the university play its role. Sometimes it is not easy to convince all the, all the people in the university that this is an important role of the university, but it certainly is worthwhile that the university has to realize that this is very important to contribute and a responsibility to contribute to the development of the region by getting involved in, innovation, in the innovation process. These are some of the institutes, research institutes that were created in Bremen. As you can see, there were four institutes recently created in order to support and provide the research and uh, new ideas to the companies that were looking to get established in that region. Now, I, I will go to my own region. Okay, I will talk more about this, uh, my, my, our particular case. Castilla-La Mancha. The economy is based, basically based on agriculture. Okay? We are the largest European producers of grapes, and we could say of wine, except that the wine, the quality till recently was not that great. Now we are improving that quality. We are exporting already wine from this region. Okay? We are innovating in, in the process of creating, uh, creating better, uh, better wines. Olive trees is also an important, uh, pro there's an important production of olive oil. And the manchego cheese that you may have heard of it, okay, it comes from La Mancha, the process. So it's a very important uh, industry there. Okay, so what to do in a region? How can we establish a strategic plan in a region that is basically developed on, on, in the uh, primary resources? So the government, develop a strategic plan of research, development, and innovation. And similar to the other regions that we, I have presented, they develop and they identify strategic areas. The use of information technologies and communications was one of them. Involved in private sector, that it was not easy to involve the, 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 the private sector within our region because these are mainly small and medium enterprises. And attract high-tech companies. And for this, obviously, we have to have a strong university. Uh, uh, we need to come with the support of the university as a key partner on this. 
Our university was founded in 1982. It has four campuses in four different cities. 25,000 students, more or less. Okay. There are few but well-established graduate programs. Obviously, in agricultural uh, studies, we have a well-established uh, program, information technology, and chemistry as well. This is the university campus. Actually, this picture here, and this, this is the sports complex, and this is the school of polytechnic, uh, the engineering school, and this doesn't really make part of the university campus. This is the building of the research institute that makes part of the science and technology park who has been, which has been developed just across the street from the university campus. This is a, I, I will come to the science and technology park. The main mot motivation of this, and this was within the strategic plan developed by the, our region, the mandate of this uh, science and technology park was to create a space where the university and the private sector could be partners. The private sector, the companies, some of them, they were given space in, this, in the buildings of this science and technology park with the compromise that they should collaborate with the, with the university in, doing, uh, in ensuring the transfer of the results from the research into new ways to develop services and products. The science and technology park has been a lot of money put into it in order to develop a state-of-the-art infrastructures, not only buildings, but as well equipment, okay, to support the research. Support of, for the creation of spin-offs, so there is a building dedicated just to host the spin-offs, coming both from the university as well with, from the private sector. So people that have a good idea, they can go there and rent for nothing, a space. For a space of, uh, for a time space of two, two years, they, uh, somebody can go there, start to develop their, their, their product, their business, and then uh, go, to the, go into the market to try to see how, how this will work, okay? There's also a lot of funding of research and innovation projects for ten, with a special aim of technology transfer so, and support to the, to the university and to the private sector in order to be able to be more competitive and go into, the, uh, into Europe to get Euro European projects ongoing. And this is a very competitive uh, project okay, that requires in the, to get involved not only the research institutes but as well enterprises that will ensure or somehow will be interested in, uh, in the technology transfer process. In the Science and Technology Park, there were five areas that were identified as being key for our um, <coughs> region. One of them is bio biotechnology, and in, believe it or not, this is an important area for the agriculture. Control and automation was also, and actually this was pushed more than for, from the government, it was the, the private sector that pushed for this. They needed uh, the control and automation. Energy, new ways to produce energy, and now well, solar energy or other kind of energy, this is a very important sector. Water resources, we have a lot of problems of water in, in our region, uh, across, across Spain, it's, it's, it's strange. We have a lot of water in the north, more than what we need. Actually, we had some floods. And in the other, in the other hand, we have uh, cities like Barcelona that are starving, that they don't have enough water. Okay, and then informatics. Informatics is another key, key area, or more than informatics, information technology and communications. To be applied in all these sectors across, or develop new products, consumers. The Albacete Research Institute, the one that I'm the director of, its main mission is to conduct and participate in ITC research projects in close collaboration with the private sector for, to ensure the technology transfer of our results. A large number of students are training and participate, sponsored by contracts with the local and national industry and European national and regional research programs. Okay, so this is important for us as one of the mission is to train people into these new areas. Regarding the human resources, there are five research labs dealing with various areas of information technology. I will go over in the following slides. More than 110 full-time researchers professors, mainly around 60 professors, scholarship holders and researchers on their contract. 
This is after five years of activity that we have been able to, well, to come to these numbers that for our standards they are quite good. Uh, experience that we have, uh, we built this institute. Actually, this was the institute that was more easy to get established because we had already a computer engineering department. So we took from there the professors and the researchers with more than 20 years conducting research, a strong background on training and research, but not very successful on technology transfer. We just stay in, in the classroom, but we were unable or we are not very good at selling things outside. Regarding facilities, well, we were given a lot of money to buy equipment, computers, like high-performance clusters. We have a, a node of the supercomputer center of our university, virtual reality labs, simulation tools, and we are more into uh, developing experimental prototypes using technologies that are available in the market, like uh, high-performance interconnects, infinite band, mini nets, that are used to connect a large number of uh, processors. Wireless sensor networks has been one an area that is, has been uh, given a lot of attention. Robots, development of systems for machine intelligence applications, surveillance and things like that. Computer-based vision systems. The five labs are divided in, into this. So this, there is one lab in intelligent systems and data mining. Another one, high-performance computer architectures and networks. I'm working on that in the area mainly of wireless communications not only on wireless sensors, but as well other, other networks, even to transmit multimedia uh, information. User interaction and software engineering, there is a lab on virtual reality, computer vision. Actually, this lab, they have been working a lot on also on um, extended, I think it's called extended reality. Uh, I was, um, this lab is working with the, uh, the public television of Castilla-La Mancha, and one of the things that they are developing is ways to, to change the scenarios, the background of the, what you see on the, on the TV, in order, uh, using extended reality instead of having to physically change the scenario in order to save on, on money and time to deploy those, those uh, facilities. There's also a lab on, dedicated to real-time and <laughs> systems. They use formal models to verify software. They use also grid computing. To, for calculation, May, I will show some of the projects that we are, <coughs> we are having uh, ongoing. And then there's also the distributed information systems. One important area that they are focusing is in geographical information systems. Now for innovation, I will show you some of the um, <coughs> projects that we have. Obviously, well, we want to focus on key sectors of Castilla-La Mancha. One, of the, one is in the agriculture mainly on food chain. Now in Europe, it is very important for the food producers to trace back, to trace the food, the production of the food from the field to the table. Let's say like a company, a supermarket, should be able to trace back together with the distributor and the producer where a particular product, let's say a watermelon comes from, what kind of fertilizers were used in order to, to produce that, that product. So all of that has to be followed up from the field till it comes to the, to the table of the, of the consumer. Okay? So this is a very important sector and there is a regulation in, in Europe that all the food that is produced, it has to be, we have to be able as a consumer to be able to know where it comes from and what has been the process involved in order to produce that. Another area important is the disaster management fires, that is a common problem during the summer season in our, in our region because it's very dry. I will show you some, some ideas of this. <coughs> let, let me just go. This is a project that we are developing. It has been sponsored by the regional government and we try to put it together for our uh, a European project. Basically, what is, what is, is uh, uh, it's an information system that will be able to deliver important information to the firefighters when they have to go out in the field, work there, and, and fight the fire, okay? So, well, <coughs> there was uh, project motivation. Actually, we sold this to the regional authorities uh, saying, well, we know that the, the forest fires, they have to work under extreme conditions. 
We know that they have a lot of technology already there in order to increment, to improve the efficiency and the safety of while they are doing the, their, their jobs, like fireproof clothing, masks, water pumps, radio systems, okay? But there are information that many times is not made available to the, to the uh, firefighter. Sometimes they don't know exactly where it are, where the fire, how the fire is developing, okay? They don't know how, where their colleagues are at one point in time. They don't know what the areas have been already burned, okay? So what we propose is to use a system that it has to be deployed on the spot as the fire is developing, as they come there to fight the fire, and based on new technology. And for this, we we're planning to use wireless sensor networks. So the scenario will be basically this. We have the forest, suddenly it breaks a fire. The, the, <coughs> the resources are put into place in order to, fire, to, uh, to go and combat the, the fire. And then we have new technology here deployed. A plane that will deploy on the spot as a network that will be able to be configured on the spot, okay? It's a network that will be built in an autonomous way Everybody will be connected, first the nodes, and then even the firefighters, okay? They can obviously move from one region to another one, okay? We have to be able to know where the different nodes are, to have a reference, not only in time, but on in space, okay? Once that we identify that, we have also the possibility of doing some collaborative processing. As the fire is developing, these nodes, they can start to send this information to the central control. In the central control, normally they, what they have there have fire models where with this data, together with the wind, the, the, the knowing the landscape characteristics, the humidity and all that, they can predict what will be the de development of the fire in the, in the, in the time to come, okay? So this is a new application for these kind of uh, sensors, okay? So this is developing here a map, a chart, and we'll be able to predict. And this information can be provided to the firefighter through a device like this one, okay? On the having an idea of how the fire behavior, the fire is behaving, the position of their colleagues, the escape ways and safety areas. This is a very important. Two years ago, there were people there were some firemen who got killed because they didn't, they were just uh, unable to find their way out, okay? And they can also be sent commands over that reporting, and at the end of the process, we can even have a log file which shows all the activity uh, during, the, uh, during the, this campaign. So this is one application that we are looking, and we, are, we have, been able to get some, some money to, to do it. And the other one is this one that is very, very similar to what this has been done here in California. So I say that wine is an important sector in our region. So what we're trying to do is to develop a system that will be able to, well, it's a prototype right now, an information system. This is, what is shown here is, well, a very fast, fast rate, how the temperature is changing through the, through the year, okay? Actually, we deployed this network, 60 nodes. It was very hard to make them work. And they were not as reliable as we were expecting. But well, this is research. Sometimes it works better. Sometimes it doesn't work that, that good, okay? So this is actually the, the deployment that we had. We had 22 observa observation points. And this is some of the data that we collected. So as you can see, we can trace and see how the temperature on this case the humidity changes over the place. This is the vineyard that we, we chose. As you can see, it's sur surrounded by another one. And this is a region, this is another one where they uh, grow onions, so obviously they need to water this. So the humidity is heavier here than in these other areas. So this is another, another of our projects that we believe that somehow in the future can give, provide um, a good, good results. Okay, let's go back to my presentation here. So this is some of the 
projects and innovation, as you can see. For this, we are participating with the local administration and a company, actually the owner of the vineyard. Now, for industrial partners, we have been able to attract the National Rail Railway Company. Actually, nowadays, they are deploying the fast train in, in our region. And one of the problems that they have is that this, the train should always get in contact with the power line here. But the fast train, this, the, what happens is that sometimes this gets disconnected because of the speed at what the, uh, uh, the, the, the train is running. And then <coughs> it, it, it is not good that this get dis, gets disconnected. So there's a particular way to set up all these bars and cables in order not, not to this to happen. So what we did in our research lab is to develop a model and then solve it uh, through using our, uh, our computers. So this has been actually uh, a result that the, the Renfe, the company, has appreciated very much. Another industrial partner, we have been lucky, the regional government and the national government were able to attract Eurocopter. This is the European hel helicopter maker on, in so they base their factory in our city, okay? And we are getting, together with this, these are big companies, so obviously they attract some other companies. And we have, we, we have already got involved in some, several projects. One of the, those is software testing and verification. As you know, these helicopters, they have a lot of, every, everything is computer-based, okay, software, okay? So it's very important to have uh, the software being tested and verified. So one of our research groups, actually, they do that, okay? And they have been working on, on this with them. There's also the computer vision systems that we have uh, get, be, be involved. And there is another important project on information systems for air traffic management that is being developed with this company and some other companies, okay? This is an important problem nowadays in all over the airports uh, across uh, across Europe and North America and all over the place. Okay, so another mission of our institute is the training, as I said, development of proof of the concept prototypes in order to show that this may work, okay, and this may translate into a, a product. We are open to collaboration with, in research and development projects in Europe. We are looking at uh, going to Europe with uh, European partners. Actually, we have already one project and as well as the international. It's appreciated to go with other countries like the US, okay, or Japan, Korea. And we, we also are doing more and more research and development contracts. And with this, I, I finish my talk. I'm in the 40 minutes, so it's <laughs> okay. So thank you very much for your attention. With the the fire project, uh -huh. um, have you have you developed the the nodes yet for that? No, no, no. We are we are in the lab. By now we are in the lab. I don't know if we are going to be able to go in the field. Okay, what we are developing now is the collaborative application, the one to integrate that for the fire model to be able to to send the information to the fire model and then well, forecast what it will happen. But this is, uh, by now, is very basic on, on the lab. Yeah. I, 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 so you're, you're not thinking about how, because most likely the nodes are going to be destroyed as that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we, we're, yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I have seen, uh, that was an interesting project. I think it came from Sweden last year in the conference right. that you attended. There was somebody that has developed paper, paper sensors. So it, say, it seems that what it says, well, it doesn't matter. It will burn this paper, so it will not even pollute the region. <laughs> Right. But uh, well, as I said, well, by now we are just using the standard uh, off-the-shelf uh, products and just to try to see if we are able to develop the, the um, fire model. And, and with the, um, uh, your vineyard sensors, the, the fact that there's an onion field just yes. to the north, I mean, that seems like it might affect the, the soil pH as well. Are, have you thought about putting those kinds of sensors in the ground? Because it, 
Yes, yes, actually, and that I have to rely more on the people that know more about the chemical stuff, the, right. okay? My, my, my area is more on communications. So what I actually I would like to integrate into that is not only the environmental conditions, but also the human uh, activity that, you know, they trim the, the, the plants, they go and put fertilizer, they water. So all that I would like to put it into a database and then uh, get involved with the group on data mining and maybe find some uh, s some explanation of why the production one year is better than other. Interesting. Okay, we have another question over here. Uh, I guess uh, my question is uh, uh, the life after uh, school age. Uh, you said lots of uh, uh, the uh, local uh, activities uh, between the universities, uh, let's see, local government and the industries. However, when uh, the student graduate with that very strong, let's see, industry or somewhat in local, probably students go away somewhere, uh, maybe outside of the La Mancha or wherever, okay? So that in that kind of situation, I have two questions. Uh, actually, how many uh, see uh, people after school stay in local? Maybe percentage, that was the first question. And uh, if it's uh, tangible, I mean, maybe large number, how can you do that? That's the second question. Yes. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. If we don't have a strong industrial partner, the people go, go away, okay? The first problem that we have to solve is to make the people stay in our university, okay? Because sometimes, well, you go by the reputation of university. Why to study in the local university? You have the school, uh, the Polytechnical School of Madrid, okay? So, well, we have been able to, to make the people stay in our region to study, graduate, uh, I mean, uh, their engineering degrees or their university degrees. And, the, and we have been very successful in, in attracting important companies like the one I mentioned, Aerocopter, and there were other seven coming there, okay? And we have also been very successful in creating spin-offs. Actually, there are something like 34 already. And many times now I'm finding that I have been so such successful that I'm having very hard time to find people to stay in my labs and work with me because they go just across the street and they find a job there. With, better, with a better salary, obviously, okay? We know the scholarship holders, they don't earn much, okay? So that is going very, very, very well. I think uh, by now the job market for the students locally has improved considerably. So I don't know, if there were a couple of questions, I don't know if that answers both or? Yeah, roughly, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do we have any other questions here today? Okay, well, thank you so much, Professor Barbosa. Great job. Thank you. Thank you.